Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engines. All right, Jason Ryan from AmericaSpace.com. And for those of you that can't quite figure out where I am today, I'm on the flight deck of Space Shuttle Endeavor. Now we've taken the tour of the entire orbiter, but we wanted to start off with you with just a little introduction. Expect to see everything, all the inside details of these spacecraft that have launched U.S. astronauts into orbit for 30 years. Okay, we are in the orbiter processing facility. Behind me is, is Endeavor. Endeavor is in the process of being safed and secured so that we can then ferry it to its final destination, which is going to be the California Science Center. Um, we're actually going to fly into Los Angeles, LAX, and offload it there. Um, but right now, a lot of work to do before we can get to that point, so let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. Um, while we're in the orbit processing facility, the main thing that we're doing is safing Endeavor to ensure that when it's on display in public, we don't have any type of outgassing or drips of things that could be toxic to people because space vehicles have a lot of things that are hazardous. So there's hypergols, there's fuels, oxidizer, ammonia, and so forth. So right now, we're in that process of removing those component, components. Either we're flushing systems, or we're actually physically removing components that have those commodities on them, so they're contaminated with those commodities. So there's a lot of work to be done still. Um, we're also in the process of removing some components out of the aft of the vehicle. Those components will be reused on the Space Launch Systems Program, which is a new program for NASA. So there's many things that are going to be removed from Endeavor, and that hasn't happened yet, so that's still in front of us. So what that does is that leads us to the September time frame as to when Endeavor will be ready to be ferried. Now, the ferry process itself is, is pretty significant in the fact that we put Endeavor on top of a 747, and we'll fly it across country out to LAX, and once we're there, we have a process where we basically offload Endeavor from the 747. So we have a system of uh, two, two cranes, heavy lift cranes, that lift up Endeavor. We then are able to remove the 747, back it out, and then set Endeavor on the ground. And that point in time, we're ready to turn it over to the California Science Center. Now, I said that very easily and quickly. It's actually a very complicated process to go through. Uh, but that's how we're going to be able to transport Endeavor and get it to California. Door of Space Shuttle Endeavor, and you can see it above me here. Now, during the 20-year history of Endeavor, whenever they had to open or close the payload bay doors on Earth, they attached these large yellow fragments, as you see here, and that's how they would open and close because it supports the weight of the doors. Otherwise, the doors would fold and crumble because they can't support their own weight on Earth's one gravity. All right, well, I think you can guess what we're about ready to go into, so why don't you follow us inside to see more of the interior of Endeavor. Hello, I'm Travis Thompson, and we're in the mid-deck of Endeavor, and uh, I'll show you around a little bit. This is where the potty was, the potty area, and uh, there was a little seat down here, and uh, it could activate all those switches and do what needs to be done when they go to the restroom in space. And, uh, when they came in, they'd be coming through here, this I and E hatch, that was a ingress and egress hatch. Then there'd be uh, another lockers here, a galley, uh, basically where their oven, where they'd heat their food and uh, take care of all their activities there. Had a hot water heater that uh, for, you know, they had some food would require hot water to rehydrate it, some food required cold water. So they had both. Then your avionics bays are here. Uh, IMUs above. Got the, all, this is where all the main computers and black boxes are. And then on launch day, we would have lockers stowed here that come out about 18 inches. They would fit in this area, come out. There would also be mid deck experiments. So if there was experiments like you've heard uh, when they flew mice or rats or whatever, that would be here on the mid deck. Um, food locker area was up here that stored their food and basically they had they could sleep over here uh, on long duration missions we had a sleep station here it was kind of like train berths and it was four of them and four people could sleep there a little sliding door and they'd have their own privacy the uh this is a ab bay three there'd be more lockers here with experiments this ladder did not uh, fly this is just for us in the ground here when we're doing 
doing daily business and work, which leads to the flight deck. This is a secondary access. We've got a primary access that's over here. Now that's how they would get to the flight deck. This is the airlock area in here. There's a hatch underneath right here that closes this area. There's another hatch underneath that platform. And with that hatch closed and this hatch closed, it creates an airlock. So they were able to get in there. That's where they would go EVA. Uh, they'd have to stay in there pre breathe pure oxygen. And um, they'd stay in there, do their EVA, do their walk. And it'd take some 20 some odd hours to do a walk. So they, you know, the whole process, they had to pre breathe and all that. So they could also, there's a hatch straight up above, and that's how they would access the. International Space Station or when we went to Mir. So it was all done in this area here with mid-deck. I mean, this is basically where they would eat, sleep, and uh, do everything. Hi, my name is Jay Beeson and we're sitting inside a OV-105 Space Shuttle Endeavor and I'm going to give you a little tour. I'm going to show you what makes her tick. We'll go right up here. This is panel 06. This panel controls a lot of the black boxes. It also controls the five general purpose computers. One through five. We go over here to 07. Is uh, where the reaction control system controls are as well as the GPS 1, 2, and 3. We move over here to 08, we have the ohms, which is the orbital maneuvering system, the large engines in the back of the spaceship. We have a right comm panel and a left comm panel for the commander and the pilot. Then we'll go right over here. And we have the mission station, which has its own communications, video, their own keyboard and monitor, much like the front. And it also houses the caution and warning system to let them know when anything's wrong and how to correct it, as well as the payload bay doors and the radiators. Moving over to this corner is the communications for the KU band, S band payload, S band PM, S band FM antennas to transmit data from orbit to, uh, to Houston. And right here we have the orbit station. This is panel A6. A6, you can basically fly the orbiter from this station using the rotational hand controller, the translational hand controller, and the digital autopilot and manual mode switches to dock the space station. You'll move over here to panel A7. You have the docking system control panel, as well as the payload cameras, video inputs, and camera commands. Moving over to panel A8, we have a dedicated panel for the Canada arm and the boom. It has its own rotational hand controller as well as translational hand controller. Moving over to the uh, payload station, this station is mission specific. It can vary depending on the payload. These two panels can be configured to support any payload that goes on the space shuttle. Thank you. Thank you. As we come to the commander's seat and we got Alan Walters our, our, our senior photographer in the commander's seat so you know this mission is doomed from the start <laughs> <laughs> well over here to the left of our commander's seat okay is in environmental controls and life support controls the O2 N2 system the liquid cool garments heat exchangers freon and water coolant loops to keep all the electronics okay. from running hot then we have our MDUs, 
all our screens to provide the crew all the information they need to support their on-orbit operations. And on the pilot side is power distribution, hydraulics, and auxiliary power units. Every switch and circuit breaker to make her tick. Going through the process of decommissioning these vehicles uh, is a little bittersweet for those of us that have been working on them and preparing them for flight in the past. Uh, but it has been a really great experience in the sense of working with the team that are going to be the last ones to actually have their hands on these vehicles. And there's many things that have been removed from the vehicles. The forward reaction control system is a major component that comes off. And so, so when that came off and we took it off to the next facility and then actually went across country to White Sands and they worked on it there and then brought it back here and then we reinstalled it. To me that was a big significance of, of the change of these vehicles. From the outside they look exactly the same. It's as if we were ready to, to fly them again. But inside those components, those hazardous components have been removed. And so to be a part of that process and part of the team that makes sure that these vehicles are safe for display and safe for the general public to see them has been quite an honor.